it's McKenna and I am in Texas for the holidays so I'm here at my parents house I'm actually filming this on New Year's Day so happy New Year's a few months ago I posted a macrame video where we dipper dot dipper died where we dip dyed a pretty large macrame wall hanging from my office back in LA and you guys really liked it so dogs barking kids late so because you guys liked it, I wanted to do an updated version of that video and do three macrame wall hangs that you can place in any room that will just kind of elevate it, make it cuter, and gonna be really easy to do, but have a lot of freedom to use different yarns and different textures and different braiding and knotting techniques. So these are gonna be pretty fun. So if you guys haven't watched the video where I knotted and dip dyed a macrame wall hang, I'll link it up above and then a down bar below. I actually show you how to do different knotting techniques, so definitely check it out if you haven't already. So let's get started. Here in Texas visiting my parents for the holidays and there's such a cute yarn store called The Tinsmith's Wife. We're gonna look for some yarn for some macrame. For this one, it's gonna be so much fun. We're gonna be using all of these really textured different yarns. I also have some traditional cording for macrame as well that we may add in, but I'm really feeling this whole like weird combination of different textures and colors. And then I'm using this ashy branch that's kind of like got some Harry Potter vibes to it. It's a little squiggly, but I think it's gonna be really pretty. And it's about three foot to three and a half foot long. So this is gonna be our larger macrame that we're gonna be doing. And we're just gonna go in with some different braiding and some different textures. So let's get started. Behind the scenes stuff. So ignore the mess in the background. The easiest way to cut all of your yarn is to space two things that you can wrap the yarn around apart the same measurement that you need your yarn so I'm gonna do this about 80 to 90 inches long because I want my finished macrame to be about three and a half feet long and then just take your yarn and wrap it all around I can't do this with one hand but you get the idea once I've got all of the yarn cut, I just kind of tie them off in the middle so that they all stay together and they don't tangle. I think the best way to start any project like this is to start with a great base color. So I'm going to be starting with like the neutrals and the lighter colors here and then building on the design with these like darker, more chunky, more textured colors because I think my brain functions that way. So I think that that's the best way to go. Anytime that I have some yarn that's thinner than others is doing a double strand Lark's Head Knot. And then it'll kind of match these like heavier textured yarns. And I'm just gonna add all of the light colored as my base, kind of alternating the different textures and the different yarns all the way across. Once I have all of the lighter colors put in, I'm gonna add in some of the darker shades, kind of matching them together and fading one color into the next. So I've started to add in some of the bolder colors and you may get to this point like I am in questioning your color palette choice, but maybe I'm thinking that this looks like Christmas because Christmas is just over. <sighs> But just keep going. You just have to put all of your yarn in and remember that, that none of this is permanent. You can always take out a color if it's too overpowering or not enough, you can add some in. But just keep going because we've got some really pretty icy blue and darker ashy blue. So it's gonna diffuse out this Christmas color palette thing I've got going on here, I hope. So now that we have all of our yarn put in and kind of evenly dispersed but with patches of different color, we're gonna be going back in and adding kind of some random textures and knots and braids and different macrame techniques such as the spiral knot. That's why I'm calling this particular macrame a freestyle macrame because you can have fun with it and you can do kind of whatever you want. Don't overthink it. Just keep going, keep adding random knots, random braids because when it all comes together, it's going to make it so interesting and so different and be unique to you. So this one 
that we're going to make is going to be using these gold metal hoops. I have the perfect place in my house for something like this, and I love the gold detailing. So we're gonna be using two of these gold hoops, one small like this for a little hanger at the top, and then the larger one. I also found this stick in the back of my mom's house, which I really like the color of it. It's part of an oak tree, but it's like this really gray, ashy color. And then we're gonna be using maybe some dark brown wooden beads. I kinda like the vibe that it would give it, so we'll see about those. And then we're going to be using this kind of mauve beige yarn paired with this like lighter beige wool yarn. And we're gonna kinda blend them all together. So let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is attach the small ring to the larger ring so that we can hang it up so we can actually start to do our macrame. So I'm just going to take some of the natural color Colored yarn. I'm just going to create a loop at the top and then go inside the hoop and then pull the strands through the loop like that. We're going to add these little wooden beads. You're going to take some wire with a loop on the end, stick the two loose ends into the bead like this. So now you have a loop on this end and then your individual ends on this side. And then you're gonna take the end of your yarn, just go through the loop of the wire. So we're kind of acting like a, like a hook so that we can pull the yarn through the center of the wooden bead. Because if you don't, I don't know how you're gonna get that yarn through the hole, but if you can, you're amazing. So then you just pull the yarn straight through. Voila, like that. So now I'm going to connect the small ring with the beads to the larger ring. So after you attach that, we're going to attach our branch. Kind of want it towards the bottom of the ring, so I'm just gonna place it on top of the ring where I want it to sit. And then we're gonna take some of the same natural yarn and we're gonna wrap it around the ring and the piece of wood several times and then creating a knot at the back to make sure it stays in place. Now we're ready to put our macrame design coming from the wood down, creating a really kind of long macrame wall hanging. Now we just add in our yarn. We are going to make our strands three and a half to four feet long. Probably gonna cut some of it. Probably. You're gonna be doubling your length before you cut your yarn. So if I'm doing three and a half feet long, I need double that because I'm actually creating a loop at the top. So I'm going to need it to be seven feet, seven feet. So the Lark's head knot is you loop it at the top and then you're going to go front to back around your stick like so, and then back through the loop. So you can see that there's a piece of loop on top and we just looped it right through and pulled it tight. And we're gonna do this across the entire stick. So now we're gonna go back in and add in a couple of braids and you can just do a thick braid or a thin braid using multiple yarns, adding in some tassels or some metal pieces. So just have fun with it and just kind of like add as you see fit. So now that I've made some knots and braids in different sizes and even put some more of the wooden beads inside, I thought I was missing a little something. So I'm going to bring in some gold beads so that it's not so muted here. For this wall hanging, we're gonna be using this really natural kind of chunky wool-like yarn. And it has some variation in the color. So you can see that it's got some black and blue and a little bit of beige kind of coming through. So I'm gonna do it in kind of a chunky style when we add it to the stick. And then we're gonna be using this stick that I picked up from the back of my mom's house. And it's a little darker than the other one that we used, but I think it's gonna be really pretty. And then to make this wall hanging extra special, we're gonna be adding in stems of 
of eucalyptus to it, which I think is gonna give it a really organic look for any room. I'm doing this one a little different. We're gonna be using a thicker lark's head knot using six strands of yarn versus just the one because I really want it to have like a chunky look and be really, really thick. So I have two different types of yarn. So I just took three strands of each of those and put them together and I'm gonna tie that on the stick using the lark's head knot. Tying the lark's head knot around the stick we're gonna be also sandwiching each of the knots together really closely because I really want it to look pretty thick and voluminous and hefty. So we're gonna be using quite a lot of yarn. So now that we have our yarn all the way across, we're gonna add in some eucalyptus before kind of adding some interesting details with braiding and knotting into the yarn itself. So I just took some floral wire and wrapped it around this, the very tip of the eucalyptus and we're just going to tie them in. Now that we've got all of the eucalyptus in it, I think it's so pretty. I'm gonna go back in in between like here, put some braids and some knots and just kind of add a little more texture and things in between each of the eucalyptus stems and then we're all done. like these three wall hangs and if you did definitely hit the like button below and if you want to follow along as I do more fun DIYs for your home and your life in your closet and anything in between I upload new videos every week so you're not gonna to want to miss them so definitely hit the subscribe button below and the little notification bell and I will see you guys next week bye guys hot Cheeto break mm. my mom may have a slight obsession with me oh. Help?